was a welcome sight seeing the king on a walkabout chatting and shaking hands with well-wishers after attending the traditional Easter Sunday service at Windsor Castle yesterday. In a rare public appearance since he was diagnosed with cancer, the 75-year-old looked in good spirits as he was joined by the queen and other members of the royal family. But one guest at the service who didn't have as much of a warm reception was the disgraced Prince Andrew. You could say he is risen and is standing firmly with the royal family. To discuss this and more, I'm joined by the host of the To Die For Daily podcast, the wonderful Kinsey Schofield. Kinsey, were you surprised to see uh, Prince Andrew standing by his brother's side there? You know, I understand that it's protocol, JJ, but you're probably going to get this more than uh, a normal anchor would. Uh, there are two scripted dramas coming out about uh, Prince Andrew, within the next few weeks, within the next few months, we're going to see back-to-back -back scripted uh, content via Netflix, via Amazon Prime, all about this um, BBC interview that rocked the royal family. It is not a positive reflection on the royal family. It brings them back to a very chaotic time. Uh, and I just don't understand PR-wise how he continues to slide through the cracks when um, I think that he is ultimately an embarrassment on the family. I mean, I if he says he's innocent of what he's accused of, I'll take him at his word, but it is guilt by association and Jeffrey Epstein is a convicted pedophile in the United States. Yeah, that's the thing. Look, Andrew, and I, I believe him, I've no reason not to believe him. He says he never met the woman in question. He paid her a few million quid to settle the, settle the, the, uh, the whole case, but he says he didn't meet her. He says that photo was a fake. He says he's not able to sweat. I believe him. He was in a, a Pizza Express instead. He was never at that party. I believe you, Andrew. You're not guilty. That is fine. However, you were mates with a paedophile. You knew he was a paedophile, and you flew out to hang out with him after he was convicted of being a paedophile. For that reason alone, I think he should be kicked out of the royal family and sent to some desert island somewhere to sit by himself and wallow in his self-pity. Uh, but with this uh, drama coming out on Netflix, Scoop, about the Emily Maitlis interview on Newsnight, men many, many millions more people around the world are now going to be made aware of this story. Not many people watched the, the original interview on BBC around the world, certainly not. In this country, a lot of us watched it, but globally, absolutely not. Surely King Charles be thinking to himself, I'm about to get in a world of bad publicity because of my stupid brother. Why is he why does he keep him around then? You know, I would I would assume that would, is what he'd be thinking, but ultimately JJ I I think that this family is closer than we give them credit for. You know, I, I know we're haunted by the Harry and Meghan, and I, I know we're haunted by the Dianas in the room and, and this feeling that this family can be ice cold. But at the end of the day, the fact that we continue to see Prince Andrew, the fact that they slowly have... You know, and, uh, did you know that Fergie was recently in a Hallmark movie? A Hallmark... I mean, what? that is literally where Meghan Markle started her career. <laughs> and Fergie has come full circle. She's getting to you know, have her cake and eat it too. She gets to show up at church with the king and she gets to play actress in Los Angeles. This is exactly what we're condemning Meghan <laughs> Markle for. And so I do feel like perhaps this family is a lot closer than we give them credit for because of, um, some, of the, some of the issues in, the, in their past. Why is it then that Randy Andy can still be accepted into the family fold, he's still listed on the website and everything, but... Harry and Meghan, who are literally making their own money, doing their own thing, away from the royals. The public aren't paying for them anymore. They're making their own millions, but they're still getting hate. How is it? How, like, how does that work? Why does that work? I think that that works because Harry and Meghan have been openly critical of the royal family, and uh, Prince Andrew and Fergie have been very tight-lipped. I mean, aside from Fergie's book, where she goes into detail about how one of Princess Diana's shoes gave her warts, which is like, let's be honest, that was pretty rude. Um, <laughs> I think that uh, Fergie's been pretty, uh, you know, when it comes to the royal family, she's she's given them. Uh, a lot of great press. You know, she's been glow she was glowing about the queen when the queen was still alive. And so I think it's based on attitudes and and how Harry and Meghan have have been really critical all over the world about this family. And, and Andrew and, and Fergie, while their behavior has been highly questionable, they have not typically been critical of the family. It just seems crazy to me that uh, a couple of people who know the royal family inside and out and were part of the firm, they leave, they're, they're critical of this establishment and the world turns on them and hates them. Meanwhile, 
you've got Andrew who was hanging out with a paedophile and getting paid money to give, give people access to the royal family. And it's like, oh yeah, but it's Andrew. You know, they've been quest questionable behavior. It's a bit more than questionable, I would say. No, I, I think that anyone that with any common sense wonders why Prince Andrew still has the access that he, he has, because he could still just be a welcomed family member already sitting inside the church, already inside of Sandringham waiting for everyone to arrive. He could be hidden in plain sight, um, yeah. uh, you know, and for some reason they've given him permission to be this uh, character that is at the forefront a lot of the times. And um, I think that that's, it, it's, uh, it's unsettling to a lot of us. Well, it's four years since Megxit. I don't even like calling it that. It's four years since Harry and Meghan left the royal family. But reports are now that they are classed as the joke of Hollywood over there. Is that true? I, I think that the, the what's happened is that, that people have been given permission to make fun of them. When they first left and they first did that Oprah Winfrey interview, uh, you saw people very protective of them. They really had a, almost a shield of victimhood. So you weren't allowed to criticize them. Remember when Bethany Frankel posted something on TikTok criticizing Harry and Meghan after the Oprah interview? And she posted another one saying, I had to immediately delete that because someone very big and powerful called me and told me I didn't understand what I was talking about and to delete it. Um, you know, when Harry released Spare, you saw... Uh, some vulnerabilities there and all of a sudden people had permission to make fun of them. Um, you know, for instance, JJ, Meghan Markle was an influencer and was, uh, you know, a, a blogger and an Instagrammer before she married Harry. And she was respected in that, in, in that environment. The Guardian recently wrote something teasing her about Harry's book, Spare, saying that if she's going to be like Gwyneth Paltrow and she's going to um, have some sort of goop type product, that instead of a candle, maybe she could do a frostbitten todger cream. <laughs> These are things you couldn't say uh, four years ago. These are things you wouldn't have said about Meghan Markle 10 years ago. So it feels like in being vulnerable or in oversharing, Harry and Meghan have opened themselves up to criticism and opened themselves up to becoming the butt of the, uh, the butt of the joke. I think it's okay to be the butt of the joke sometimes. I think that's all right. And it shows that they're human. They're not going to put out some uh, cease and desist order against South Park or The Simpsons for taking the, the mickey out of them, are they? So I think that's a good thing. But very quickly, on Meghan's rebrand and her selling todger cream, perhaps, or vagina-scented candles, do you think it's going to be a success? Is this going to make her a few, few million quid or even maybe many, many millions? I think that it's a no-brainer. I, I, she does have an established audience that wants what she's selling. So I don't see that there, I don't think that there's any harm in her pursuing this. I think that if, she, if she's got a product that people would buy, why wouldn't you do it? That's America. Yeah, and would you be buying anything from her? What, what has she got to sell for you to be like, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll take some of those. I don't know because I'm into like like bright colors. I'm not really into the beige. Uh, you know, I love <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow's. Uh, I love Gwyneth Paltrow's skincare line. So if she did something similar, maybe I would do that. Well, you know what I would do if I was Megan. I would take a diffusion mm -hmm. line dedicated to Prince Harry of all weed, marijuana. It's legal over there, right? In some of your states. Perfect. That's what they should Wait, do. Wait, JJ. She has a she has a cousin, or she has somebody that has a Markle weed brand out here. Oh well, there you go. It's perfect. Kinsey Schofield. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you.